Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Lucid, and we are jumping back into the Crucible. It's turn 62. Uh, I want to let you know that the me from last episode and the me from this episode uh, are about six months apart, maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm kind of recording this much later. And, uh, yeah, so... I will probably have some slightly different insights and perspectives than I did at the time, but uh, I will be going through these turns uh, with much of the same surprise uh, as I originally opened up the turn file, since it's been so long I don't necessarily remember everything. But um, anyway, we are getting to a very exciting part of the game, so I'm very excited to share uh, these next few turns with you. Um, it is about to get crazy. Um, the Marinese Empire is falling apart. Agartha has just stormed through since Marignan has had his armies only committed to fighting me off. Um, and so Agartha has taken everything. And with that, uh, it's very clear who the next superpower will be. And that is going to be Agartha. So uh, without further ado, let's look at this turn. So we are getting uh, reasonably high up in blood magic. I'll have to see exactly what that is. We'll go check real quick. Um, so we're at blood 8, and that is very important because it opens up Rush of Strength for us, and this is why we went to blood 8. <clears throat> there are very few spells that will increase the damage output of all of your troops. Um, there's Rush of Strength, which is kind of the only way to increase strength for all your troops. If you want to go with just increasing some of your troops' damage, you have Strength of Giants. Um, and then you also have, in Construction, you have Weapons of Sharpness. But, I mean, this is a big spell. It's Area of Effect 25. But um, if you're coming in with Hordes of Skeletons, this is not going to cut it. And our Earth Mages are already in very short supply. So having a way to buff up our troops to hit through some of the late game protection spells is pretty important. Uh, and that is why we are bringing Rush of Strength. Uh, it also gives us Life for Life, which is another way to deal with super combatants. And then potentially through Red Seconds, though we probably will not be using that. Um, okay, back to our thingy. Uh, okay, so Voice of Apsu... Uh, Gnome Lord, did not find anything. Okay, we found two magic sites here. Let's go see where the hell this is. Okay, nice. What are these sites? Um, Battlefield and Labyrinth of Skulls. So that's one Death Gem, and I think this is one, too. So that is nice. We can always use more Death Gems. I, I'm going... I mean, I cannot spend enough Death Gems with this nation. Mm. Okay. Uh, I saw his Pretender God, so this is going to be interesting. Um, maybe I'm missing something? Okay, I think I know what happened here. We, uh... We were trying to get some guys out of Dodge, uh, and they retreated to a place where I didn't want them, so I'm having to have them ping this fort and then retreat out. So, uh, that is basically what happened here. Um, and then down here... Oh, the other context that's pretty important for this episode is in... Uh, the previous turn, I'm basically getting wiped out by Marinese Doomstacks. I mean, I'm fully committing because I have to bust through Marignon's Doomstacks before Agartha takes everything. Uh, but it's not working, guys. So battle number two. Uh, this is on top of... Is this on top of Scalaria? What the hell is... Okay, he's just getting rid of some cursed afflicted dudes. Where the hell is that? Uh, Centenia. Okay, so we take those off his hand. Um, a Harbinger comes in. Uh, these are pretty cool little dudes. They can cloud trap these, which is always really cool. But uh, it is not going to uh, kill all of these guys. I mean, actually looking at it, it's theoretically possible here. Um, he's casting... What? Storm? What you doing, bro? I don't know why he's casting Storm. Storm power? Oh, maybe he thought I'd have a thug here? I can't remember if I... I think this is on top of one of my forts, too. So now he's all fatigued out. He actually might have been able to kill all these guys if he just did a thug script. 
with mist form and mirror image or something. But uh, yeah, right now his harass penalty has taken his defense to zero, plus he's crippled. Um, I think we know how this is going to end. Uh, okay, any final words? Nope. Um, okay, so that was here on the Western Plains. We lost nine undead. Trading for a fully kitted Harbinger? Uh, unsure about that. Um, and then we have a big battle here, so let's just see what happens. So Marignan is attacking Agartha here. Now this is a desperate attempt from Marignan to throw off Agartha from this throne. Um, because he has fully committed his armies to attack me to keep me out of Pangaea, uh, he has very little to try to throw off Agartha. And so basically, I look at this as a mage sacrifice. Um, I don't even, I mean, it essentially doesn't even matter what he's going to script. Agartha is known for very heavy troops. Uh, so there's not gonna be any kind of mage shenanigans that a few of these guys are going to do, which is going to kill all of this stuff, especially this few, so yeah, it's basically over before it started. We'll speed through it just so you get to see the battlefield magic coming down. Yeah, rip. Um, yeah, so that was him trying to, I guess, hurt Agartha, though questionable there. Um, and then we are attacking Marignan here. Okay, there's nothing there, so it's just PD. Um, and then Agartha is attacking, attacking Marignan here. And this is a fort battle, and there's not much inside, so I think we know how this is going to go. Um, I have to say, I am surprised by how much, just the raw quantity of what Agartha has. And, um, I, I talked with this player, the guy who's playing Agartha, and he had watched my Let's Play on M.A. Agartha and said basically... He liked a lot of things I was doing, but uh, that I seriously underused Magma Children, and I tend to agree with him. Um, these guys are pretty phenomenal once you put uh, any of the Army of Letter Gold spells on them, and they have 20 protection. Uh, because basically they have a AoE 1 uh, attack, which is going to be doing uh, strength-based damage, so especially if you have a way to buff their strength, um, they can do pretty phenomenal damage. And because it's fire damage, it's uh, armor piercing. So... Pretty, pretty solid. Uh, and then your statues, of course, are very excellent. The thing that's a little anti-synergetic with the uh, the statues, like they have phenomenal protection, uh, but uh, it doesn't really benefit from Army of Gold, which with Agartha, with all the high earth magic you have, is going to be kind of ubiquitous in the late game. Okay, so that is that, and then we're down to the events, and then we're going to kind of scoot forward into uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, we are catching a lot of Agarthan scouts, and what this probably means is that uh, he's trying to figure out what the hell is going on, uh, so that he can attack me. Uh, because it's becoming very clear, like, while Agartha was kind of swooping in to help with Marignon, who was kind of winning this little conflict with me, though we were kind of just more grinding each other down, um, with him killing Marignon so fast, any alliance Agartha and I had is going to be very tenuous, uh, because there is not much time between now and the point at which we're going to be having to fight each other. Um... Agartha also is potentially getting kind of close to a throne victory. He only has three thrones right now, but uh, let's see, he has this throne. Um, he has this throne. So I think these are the two that he definitely has in his possession right now that he has claimed. Uh, but he's also getting this one. Uh, this is right on his border, so he can take that. He can get this one. He has this one, but he just hasn't claimed it yet. Um, and so he's getting kind of close. I, I don't know exactly which ones these are, but he's definitely in striking range of a throne victory. Um, and so anyway, that is all the events. Let's talk about troop movement here. So, um, <laughs> 
the problem that we kind of have is by the time we get an army which is capable of beating this doom stack, it gets flames from the sky, uh, and then they're kind of dead. I do not have any fire access, so I cannot forge rings of fire uh, or plate mail, which are really the only ways to keep human mages alive from flames from the sky. So, uh, the only thing I kind of have, and we've talked about this, uh, are these demon banes. Which, it's a water too, so it takes a lot of gems. Um, and I've been using them, right? Like, this guy has one. So... Uh, this is kind of the trick. How do I bust through quick enough... Uh, before... Without getting... Uh, like, I need the, the right size army, or I need enough enough different threats that... I don't have to have a single doom stack that's just going to get annihilated by flames from the sky. So, that's kind of the situation. Um, and meanwhile, we're fighting back many different types of threats, like Purgatory, which Abyssia has up, with huge amounts of blood sack. Like, Abyssia is probably blood sacrificing in every single province. So, yeah, it's pretty tricky. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, okay, in terms of troop movement, um, we are moving... Who's moving in? We're moving uh, a pretty big contingent of dudes to reinforce this. I do not want Agartha's army here to come and be able to take this very quickly. Uh, I also uh, am moving dudes up here, and... Uh, what is the script we have? We've got Communion Master with some apostasy and attack. I think I'm worried about Marble Oracles. Um, yeah, like this guy coming in. So you see the apostasy, attack, apostasy. That's to get this guy in range of apostasy spam so I can hopefully take one of his uh, one of his dudes. Um, and we're basically still going to be attacking with these guys. Like, they hit here and they retreated off. That was that retreat battle. Uh, but they went back up here, so they're trapped again. I'm going to keep hitting this until I can bounce off in the right direction. Um, but, you know, if I do that and he attacks both of these provinces, then these guys are just going to be dead. So that is kind of it. I don't... This is not a super uh, crazy impactful turn. The other problem I have is I've got... I've moved a bunch of guys to my capital because I was going to be recruiting a bunch of Banes and things like that here to send units off, but I've got more Priests here than I can actually uh, send off, and so that is kind of a problem. Um, we're getting another Troll King, so we're spending some of our Earth Gems. Uh, I have a ton of Pearls, and those are getting saved up for the most worthy purpose of putting up Arcane Nexus. I don't know, where where's my Arcane Nexus Mage? Uh, it's going to be this guy. How are we doing on gear for Arcane Nexus? So we have the Dimensional Rod. Uh, we have a Crystal Coin. So these two alone are enough to get me up to seven. And I've got one more slot. I think I have... I don't... We'll have to check. Do I have... I don't know if my Ring of Sorcery is lying around. Here's my Earth Astral Mage. So anyway, we're getting pretty close. I, I have to check. I'll have to look through. Uh, because I'm kind of coming back after the fact, I'm not totally sure where all my items are. But um, I'm getting very close to being able to put Arcane Nexus up. Uh, it is uh, 150 gems to cast. I already have that, but I want to overcast it by a good bit. I'm not sure how much. Um, and it is only Astral 8 to get off. So, uh, assuming I have a Ring of Sorcery or Ring of Wizardry running around, which I think I do, uh, I will be able to basically fire off that Arcane Nexus, and then we'll be in good shape. So this guy is also uh, basically ready to go with Twiceborn and Ritual of Returning, so we'll probably put other stuff on him to help him not die if he gets attacked by horrors or random events or anything, because once you put 400 gems in something, you need to cover all your bases and make sure that guy is not going to die easily. Um, so anyway, I think that is it for this turn. Let's go ahead and pull up turn 63. 
So turn 60... Oh, you know, we didn't do diplomacy. Let's go back and do 62 diplomacy. At least outgoing. I don't know if I sent anything. I didn't. So 63, we get a message from Marignan. Uh, for a few reasons I was originally planning to, particularly as I can't hope to beat either of your armies if I split my forces. That said, it seems only fair that I leave Pangea to you uh, and see if I can't push Agartha back, if only until my forces are inevitably overwhelmed. Thanks for the opportunity of playing this game and for the fun battles. Good luck against uh, Abyssia and Agartha. So that is a very courteous message. Um, and yeah, I guess I was like a little tilty if you were listening to this talking about Marignan, but... Uh, and in some ways, it's just good diplomacy from Agartha, because he kind of swooped in at the right moment. Um, but I was really hoping that Marignan would cut a deal where he gave up some of his land to me and then defended himself against Agartha. I mean, Agartha is not a fast-moving army, right? He, his guys only move one province at a time, and Marignan potentially can be a, a bit faster. So... Yeah, but anyway, I had, we had some really good battles, uh, Marignan and I, so I cannot say that I regret any of that. Uh, even the battles you lose, when you have just two huge armies fighting each other, it is pretty fun. Um, and they went both ways. I won some of the early ones, he won some of the later ones. Um, okay, so he is moving this way to keep this throne from Agartha, so I think he's going to give Agartha at least one good fight, um, which is certainly fine by me. Uh, we have another Vampire Lord. We cast Dark Knowledge, we found a Well of Pestilence. Nice. Uh, Troll King Court, so we have another Troll King. Uh, there was a battle in Pangea. I'm trying to get my dude out, but I'm so far... Uh, I don't know where this guy... Did we get him out? Okay, we got some of them out. Some of them retreated in the right direction, so that's nice. Um, there's another battle here, where Abyssia basically pushes some of Marignan's dudes out. And then... Actually, there's one more thing I think I want to say on uh, the diplomatic front here. Uh, there's not too much more in terms of events. Um, while in some ways Mar you could say Marignan was doing a public service by fighting me with kind of his full armies, he, he probably could have played this a lot better. Like, if he told Agartha, I'm not going to keep my armies off your front, because I know that you'll come backstab me, which Agartha did. So if you do not help me attack Scalaria, then I'm going to be forced to give up some lands to Scalaria, because I think if he were playing to win, that's what he would have had to do, would give up some land, he would have to give up lands to me. And that would have made me be probably the bigger, the better guy. The problem really was that Marignan was so big, so much bigger than everybody, that... Uh, he could not give, like, he couldn't fight me with all of his armies and then expect other people to kindly ignore an undefended border. So he would have, he, I think he basically just had to accept that at this phase in the game he would get a little smaller and then figure out what he does diplomatically to kind of swing things back in his favor because Marignan has very good late game stuff with some of their special astral summons and things like that. Um, you know, he definitely still could have won, but I think just, yeah. He either had to win very decisively against me and then, like, continue to push me back, which is really hard when you look at just the undead economy I'm grinding into him. Um, but anyway, so that's enough on that. Um, anyway... He has told us that we can have Pangea, and we will definitely take him up on that offer, but we will not assume it's coming free. So right now we're going to move a little scouting force in, in case he's kind of baiting me, because I trust him, but I don't trust him that much. So uh, the scouting force is going to be dropping some of the important spells, like Foul Vapors, Life After Death, Fog Warriors, uh, etc., etc., Will of Fates. Uh, yet, we're not going to commit everything. And what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, <laughs> we're not going to be moving in like a bajillion troops that he can nuke with flames from the sky. We're going to kind of gradually amp up the siege here. Uh, and meanwhile, we're going to continue to push in this way. 
Uh, I don't send a message back. That's kind of impolite. Marion sent a nice message. I probably should have messaged him back. Um, anyway. Uh, but that is basically what we're doing. We're moving here, we're moving here. I'm also moving a big force up this, or a small force up this way. Um, I forget exactly what my plan is here. Oh yeah, I need to get these guys. This force is basically moving up uh, just to preach. Or no, we've already got a bunch of guys here. Who else is coming? This guy is at, coming to join the group uh, to preach is what's going to happen. But actually, this is kind of dumb. Because he's diseased and he has an item, so I should take the item off of him and let him die. Now, he's not twice born or anything, and even then it wouldn't matter. He's just going to lose the gear, so that is an oversight. Um, oh, okay, so now we're also attacking Agartha. Because Agartha and I do not have a nap, so there's nothing... It's kind of just the gentleman's agreement that we needed to eat Marignan, but... Uh, he is sieging up a bunch of Marinese forts... And uh, because of that, uh, the timing, I, I do not want to let him entrench at all. Marignan has a huge fire income. Uh, Agartha definitely has things he can spend that fire income on. Um, he's a little spread out trying to siege down all these different forts. Uh, I need to start making my move yesterday. So uh, with that, we are going to be moving out immediately on Agartha and trying to take some of this stuff. We've got... Very efficient little raiding squads, um, and this is really the time where you wish you could carry more undead on each of your uh, priests with undead command, but uh, basically just a mix of uh, Retarius um, and then undead chaff, and they will pretty efficiently chew through even high protection units, given that it's, well, I mean, when I say efficiently, I mean, it's a very low commitment attack for me. I mean, we're, we're only using one mage turn, and it's going to kill anything that doesn't have a fair number of mage turns invested. So, that is basically it. So we're attacking here. Just a bunch of raiding. I want to see what Agartha is going to do. We're going to take some of this stuff. Um, we're going to take this back from Agartha. This is uh, part of our original deal that I gave him a long time ago. Um, Abyssia... I can't remember my diplomatic situation with Abyssia. Abyssia and I, I think we have a like a one-turn nap, but I can't remember. So I'm going to leave Abyssia stuff, and this was stuff I basically agreed in our last conflict to hand over to him. And actually, you know, um, like when I was getting ganged up on, similar to how Marignan was getting ganged up on, I was very quick to peel away some lands, right? And you need to be careful about which lands you peel away, but... Uh, that's basically the same thing he should have done. He should have, like, peeled away some lands uh, and then focused on somewhere else. So, like, if he peeled some lands away to me and then focused on Agartha, or peeled some lands away to Agartha and then was able to continue to focus on me, but um, that would have been more tricky. Like, I mean, even to do that, he would have had to have some forces defend, because if I'm Agartha, I would much rather have all of Marignan's lands than, like, half of it. So, I mean, he got, like, the deal of a, of a lifetime. Um, but we're going to basically be attacking everywhere. We're attacking here, we're attacking here, we're attacking here. So the next episode will be... Uh, we will see all of these attacks on Agartha come to fruition. Uh, and we'll see what Agartha's kind of made of here. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know how long Abyssia is going to let me fight Agartha. Um... Abyssia has kind of... They've been playing very conservatively. Um, they made some good plays, like they attacked me and won some permanent territory. Um, but they're... Like, while they're making a few small plays, they're not making any big plays. And when they do make a big play, they're too late. So, like, he missed out on taking a lot of uh, Marignan's land, which he could have done... Uh, he's going to probably... I mean, honestly, he should probably attack Agartha, because I can't even attack him because of Purgatory. Uh, I mean, he could attack me too, but it's going to be much slower going. And that's the big thing I have, is all these ghouls here are going to make it take forever for him to try to take something from me. Uh, unless he gets his Dominion push going, which obviously he's having trouble with, because 
I have a bajillion preachers who I can have preach. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about. I mean, that's basically that's basically all we got. We do have a doom stack coming in here, and this doom stack is going to go on one of these two forts. Um, it is going to be going. Let's look at all the spells we've got. Uh, this guy's coming in. I don't have him scripted with any of the mass flight fog warrior stuff yet, but I'll be doing that eventually. I just basically am bringing gear for him. Um, Rush of Strength is coming out, turn one, boom, that's at Blood 8 Research Objective. Uh, also, notice my vampires all have the fire resistance gear, so I don't have to, you know, they're going to be pretty safe. Um, then we've got Mass Regeneration coming out, which is really only for my mages, uh, and Relief, and Rain. And uh, Power of the Spheres, uh, I don't have enough for Anti-Magic here, that's probably okay. Uh, Army of Gold... Coming up, turn one, boom. And then, the thing, why I need this turn one is because he can do, like, turn one pillar of fire that will just kill my whole army. Um, and army of gold does a lot to slow down pillar of fire. Uh, life after death, boom. Divine blessing. I've got another life after death coming out, and the reason I'm doing this is because if for whatever reason one of these mages die, uh, I need life after death out. So some of my spells, I'm kind of being redundant on this one. I'm actually triply redundant. This might be a little too much. Uh, but I can switch one of these guys to casting Darkness or something later. Uh, anyway, that's basically the script. I mean, Darkness is not good against the Gartha, but... Uh, this is my High Commitment attack. Ideally, uh, I lock up this fort. Because I move a bunch of guys on here. Uh, and then next turn, I pop this under Siege. Actually, the timing's kind of off. Really, I would want to lock this up the same turn I put this under Siege. But as it stands, if I come in here, there's a few things. One is I could take this army and move it over here, and it's going to kill whoever he sends over this way to break this group off. That's probably what I should do. Uh, the other move you can make is I can try to trap whoever is in here in a fort, and then... The same turn I'm trapping him, I also crack this fort, and that way he can't combine armies. Uh, but Versa Gartha, we're going to be trying to raid like crazy. That's basically what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to outraid him, um, and I don't know if we're going to win any of the, the first team battles, but like this is a very high commitment attack for me, so ideally this group does not die. Um, and I'm hoping that Agartha has a ton of forces still committed down here to taking these forts. And that that buys me some time to take some of these things, which maybe his armies are not as fortified, uh, or are not defending as well. Uh, but the island up here, I'm going to be a little careful, because ideally I want these two armies to crash and kind of grind each other down. I do not want, I do not really want to fight any more of Marignan than I have to. Let Marignan fight Agartha. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this, and then... I'm done, I think, with the island. This is not going to be my zone where I'm going to... I'm going to try to push in mostly up here and up here where there's large raiding fronts on Agartha, uh, which do not have the same kind of army commitment that these lands where he's actually... His army's more in Marignan's lands than they are up defending kind of his original stuff. So anyway, we're going to do that.